Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be getting ready for Thanksgiving with a pumpkin date pie. It is a favorite in our house and we're going to start with the crust. For the crust we need a cup of almond flour, a cup of oat flour, baking powder, butter, and an egg. As always, I will leave a printable link to this recipe in the description box down below. I'll start by grinding up my oats. I grind them with a coffee grinder I got on Amazon for like $19. I need one cup of oat flour plus more for dusting. When you grind your own flour, you want to make sure that you press it down gently. You don't want to pack it, but you do want to make sure you get an accurate reading for how much you have. So to a large bowl, we'll add our one cup of almond flour, one cup of oat flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one egg. Next, we're going to dice our cold butter. I like to dice my butter right on the paper. It makes it a lot easier to just put it straight in the bowl. I'm just going to mix this up with my hands. You can use a fork, obviously. I just was like, you know what? I always end up using my hands by the end anyway, so I'm just going to do it. I have mixed feelings about it. So we're gonna work the dough together like a, any other pie crust, adding a tablespoon of ice water to the dough at a time until it comes together in a dough that's not too sticky but doesn't fall apart. We're gonna cover the dough and set it aside for 10 minutes to kind of melt together while we make our filling. This filling is so good. It's pumpkin, dates, milk, spices, two eggs, and honey. In a large bowl, we're gonna to combine together our eggs, one can of pumpkin puree, and our spice mixture, which is one teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Setting that aside, we're gonna puree our 12 dates with the milk. We're gonna blend this up until it's a smooth and creamy puree, similar to the pumpkin. And that's our pie filling. We're gonna mix it together really well and set it aside to finish our crust. So initially when we start rolling out our crust, because it has almond flour in it, it is going to be crumbly and start to come apart and be a little bit annoying. But I promise it will all work out. Just keep folding and rolling. It took me, I want to say, four to five minutes to work this crust out so that it would go in the pan in one piece. When it starts sticking, add more flour. And don't forget to add flour to your rolling pin too, because that seems to be the thing it likes to stick to the most. And I know there's a lot of footage of me rolling and fussing with this dough, but I'm leaving it in here so that you see it's not just frustrating to you, it's frustrating in general to make pie crust. So just stick with it, you'll get there. I promise it's worth it. Once the dough is rolled out and will fit in your pan, you place the pan over top and just flip it over and remove the paper, trim off any excess around the edges, just check and make sure it's the same thickness throughout. I really like this particular crust to be about a quarter of an inch thick. I just find that the flavors complement each other so well that the ratio works. I like my pies to look a little bit rustic, so I just do a very simple crimp. So I'm just gonna put four coals in the bottom so that it doesn't puff up and put it in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit for five minutes before we add our filling. Okay, my pie is out of the oven and ready for the filling, so I'm just gonna scoop it in there 
and if this looks awkward at this angle that's because it is these IKEA bowls are beautiful but they are heavy I'm gonna just spread my filling out and I'm gonna add a little dusting of cinnamon because I think it looks pretty um, and be sure to turn the oven down to 375 Fahrenheit otherwise the pie will burn We're gonna bake this pie for 40 minutes to start with, but after I checked it, I ended up cooking it for five more minutes just to get it done enough in the middle. If halfway through you feel like your crust is starting to get too brown, you can simply take some foil, fold it in half and make a little half moon out of it, and then you can very carefully place it over top of your pie. Try to make sure it doesn't touch the soft center and you don't have to crimp it down around the edges or anything. Just lay it on top and it will protect your crust. Next we have our whipped cream topping. So this is a little bit different. It has protein in it um, with the Greek yogurt. So I really like this a lot. So we're going to put one cup of heavy cream in and we're going to do one half of a cup of Greek yogurt. And it doesn't affect the texture at all but it definitely bulks up your whipped cream and it gives you that food pairing that you need for a more stable blood sugar. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract gives this its flavor. And two tablespoons of honey. Cream in and of itself is a little bit sweet. This just brings out that natural sweetness. It doesn't take very much. Whip it until you see stiff peaks taste it to make sure it's to your liking, and then put it in an airtight container in the fridge until you're ready to eat your pie. So good. Here's a tip that I highly recommend. When you serve this pie, serve it straight out of the fridge. Something happens to the sugars in the dates and the pumpkin when it's cold. It is so incredible. I highly, highly recommend serving this pie cold. It is absolutely delicious. This goes so quick in my house. My family happily tested this recipe over and over again. And while I was making this video, my son came in and said, So, would you make another pie? I hope you guys like this recipe and have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>